Hello, my friends. Happy Monday. Super excited to be here with you guys today. My name is Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes, and I am thrilled to be here sewing with you <laughs> on our Vintage Stars Sew Along. So Vintage Stars is the quilt behind me here on the wall. I have had this pattern for a while now, but we are remaking it in a new fun fabric collection that I have out right now called Sweet Freedom and it's been really fun this is week four of our sew along and uh, i hope you guys have had fun with it so far i've seen a few of you that have already assembled your quilt tops in the facebook group uh, that's been really fun if you're not in our facebook group i would highly recommend you join because it's a super fun place and it's a great way to share your projects so um, that link is in today's video description so you can check it out and join the fun. It's over on Facebook. If you don't do Facebook, that's okay too. <laughs> no stressing there. It's been gorgeous in Tennessee. It's, it was rainy last week, uh, but it was very nice this weekend and it's lovely today. It's 81 and partly cloudy and just, just warm enough that I don't have my air conditioning on yet, but I have my ceiling fan on. So hopefully that doesn't distract with our lighting or sound in any way. But um, I really have been enjoying the weather. I had a lovely time last week in Colorado Springs. A few of you guys came out and said hi, so that was very fun. If you are in the Colorado Springs area, make sure you go check out High Country Quilts. It is a fabulous shop and they love Riley Blake there, so we love them right back. <laughs> um, so if you're ever in the area, go in and say hi, because it's super fun. So I had a great time this last week, and I'm very excited to be back and sewing with you guys. So let's see who's here today. Teresa was here first. Teresa is very regularly our first commenter, and I just adore her for that. <laughs> she gets on a little bit early, and I love it. It just brightens my day, Teresa, to see you say hi. <laughs> uh, Judy's here and Ruth is here. Ruth said that she loves the lives. She wish I would do them even if there wasn't a sew along. Thanks, Ruth. I love it. I am working on that. Sometimes there's just too much behind the scenes work that um, goes on. There's just a lot of prep in things, you know, to get them ready for other things. So. <laughs> all that to say gibberish but i do love uh, being on these lives with you guys it's very fun for me too um pamela's here from warm southern indiana leona's here and bobby from north carolina hi guys <laughs> tess is here 87 in georgia no that's too close to summer for me like i can do 81 i'm okay with that that's nice i can go back in the house if i get too warm but 87 feels a little bit like summer's hurrying itself along too quickly. I don't like that. <laughs> Pamela says she stopped hand sewing the binding on her tea party quilt to enjoy some time with me. Love it, Pamela. And Val's here. Kimberly's here from Missouri. And Lisa, this is Bait. I always say your name wrong. Baby, is that right? <laughs> Deborah, Tess is here. Dorothy's here from Utah. Hey, Dorothy, did you see the Garden of Quilts registration is open? I hope that you're coming this year. I didn't link to that today, you guys, because I forgot. <laughs> but if you are super interested in Garden of Quilts, it is very fun in Utah in September, and it is registration just open today. So that's very exciting. Um, you can check it out at the Thanksgiving Point website. It's a reach... It's classes and a quilt show. It's a little bit hard to describe because I haven't been to anything else like it, but it's put on by Riley Blake, but it's not just Riley Blake Designs teachers. It is uh, all kinds of different teachers. It's just going to be so fun. And this year, even more fun, we have a super special guest on Wednesday night. Melissa Gilbert from Little House in the Prairie is going to be the speaker that night. She is a brand new Riley Blake Designs designers. Her company um, has a collection coming out that's 
Little House in the Prairie inspired. And you guys, I cannot wait to meet her. I am beyond excited. I grew up watching Little House and it was my favorite thing. Let's raise your hands if you guys were a Little House in the Prairie watcher. Anyway, very, very excited about that. Um, I'm gonna fangirl all over her. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to come, it's also like, so there's a quilt show out on the grounds of this amazing botanical garden. So it's gorgeous. And then there's all kinds of classes you can take everything from crochet to, well, I think there's, there's been crochet in the past, embroidery, all sorts of quilting classes, of course, uh, bag classes. You can find almost anything that you want to learn there. So I have three classes I'm teaching this year. One is my orange Pico quilt. So that is the orange peel applique quilt that came out with afternoon tea. I am teaching um, a new quilt that is coming out in August. It's called Song Sparrow and it's to go with my new melody collection. So that one's really cute birds and flowers. And I am teaching a class with Amanda Niederhauser, Jedi Craft Girl. It's called Crazy Cat Lady and it's a mini quilt and it's super cute, you guys. It's really, really fun. So, and of course, you know Amanda and I will have a great time in class. We would love for you to join us. And speaking of Amanda and I, we are hosting our game show again on Thursday night. So it's called Let's Make a Quilt. It is a quilty game show. It's so fun, you guys. And this year we have a luau theme. So very, very excited about taking that up a notch. We'll have luau themed buffet dinner. And of course, all the games are gonna be amazing. We'll have new ones and old favorites. There are amazing prizes, you guys, like seriously amazing prizes. <laughs> so, and it's a really just fun way to meet new quilty friends. So if you are in the Utah area in September or want to make a trip in September, check out Thanksgiving Point, just Google Thanksgiving Point Garden of Quilts and the website will come out and you can start checking out all the classes. So let me know if you guys have questions. <laughs> okay, let's see. Homestead in the Wood with D is here from Eastern Kentucky. Well, that's so fun. I love your name. Sherry's here. Roxy's here. Hot and humid in Florida. Sorry, Roxy. And Deborah's here. Murfreesboro is beautiful. Oh, good, Deborah. Um, Pamela says... To Rebecca, she's doing it in Christmas fabric, still cutting out her triangles. Oh, fun, I love it. We have some Christmas versions. Uh, Nandy's here, Pamela's here. Oh, she loves Melissa Gilbert, yay. Marie's here, hey Marie. <laughs> Jackie, Lisa says she met me at Garden of Quilts, the Dome Girls triple play night in the barn in 2021. That was a very fun night. And the Doan girls, Jenny Doan and her daughter and daughter-in-law are teaching classes again this year. They're not doing a trunk show, but they you can take classes from the Doans and that's like an opportunity you can't pass up, right? <laughs> Ruth says she's waiting on Meadowland to come back from the long armor. Love it. And Nandy says she sees a lot of Floridians. I love, we have Florida representing in the house today. Love it. Raise your hand if you're in Florida. Jackie says she grew up watching Little House as well. Oh, I love it. And hey, Mona. And Roxanne is here from Greenville. Joe Beth is from Arizona. My goodness, we have, we're all over the place. <laughs> so glad you guys are all here. All right, are you ready to sew? We have a pretty easy tutorial today because all it is involving. So last week, let's start at the beginning. Let's look at our schedule. <laughs> I got all excited. Okay, so a few, we started off with our kickoff and that was on the 25th, just talking about the different things that we are um, going to need for the quilt. So if you going to rewatch videos, you can skip that video if you would like. April 1st is cutting with templates. So we go over how to cut out these pieces with trying with the paper templates that come in the pattern or with the acrylic templates that you can purchase separately. Last week we talked about how to sew our rows together and that's one of the best things about this quilt is that it is assembled in rows instead of blocks. So it makes it really fun to put together. And that's what we're gonna do today. Quilt top and assembly, quilt top assembly is today and next week we will talk about how to trim up our quilt tops because they're going to be kind of wavy with all of our different pieces and how to put our borders on. So that's gonna be very fun. So let's look at rows. So, oh, and I wanna tell you guys before I get too sidetracked on sewing, 
Uh, Angela it, from Happy Little Stitch Shop is our partner on this sew along. She kitted up a bunch of the Vintage Stars quilts so that you can make yours exactly like mine, which is super fun and in great timing before Memorial Day. So I like to do the patriotic stuff. So it's out before Memorial Day, just before, and then I leave it up all through June and then through 4th of July. And then I change out for like sunflowers or summery things. But it's this is a great time because you can finish it up, quilt it in April. Wait, what is it? Quilt it in April and May. <laughs> It's halfway through April, and then you can have your quilt all ready for Memorial Day. So how fun is that? She kitted up more of these quilts. So she sold out of them the first round, and she made up some more. So I imagine these will go quickly. If you want to make yours up in Sweet Freedom, or if you want to make another one for a friend, now that you know how fast these quilts are, these are great gift quilts. So you can run over, I have it linked in today's video description. You can go visit Angela and pick up a Vintage Stars kit and don't wait on that because I have a feeling they'll go quickly and I don't know how many more she made. So def if you're wanting another kit, this is the perfect time to pick them up because it's tailored to this quilt. So you get all the background fabric, the prints and the border fabric and it's perfect. So, <laughs> and it includes the patterns. I'm not sure about the templates. You'll have to look at the listing and see if it includes the templates. Either way, she has the templates there if her kit doesn't include them. So you can just add them on and purchase them all at once if you don't already have them. <laughs> okay, so are you guys ready? Here's gonna, we're gonna just sew together one row. They're all assembled exactly the same. So once I show you how to do one of these, you'll carry that through all the way down the quilt. So we've started with our first row. This is the top row of the quilt. These are the little accent pieces and this is the top of one star. So if you're looking at the pattern, this is the first row. Now this is in different fabrics than Sweet Freedom fabrics, but that's okay. You get the same gist of it. So these are the accents and then this is the beginning of this first star. So you can see that the, the first section has two stars and then the next section has three stars and then we just repeat those kinds of things. But they're all assembled in rows and so we're going to sew those rows together. <laughs> oh, Deborah asked who has a Laura Ingalls doll. I didn't have a Laura Ingalls doll but I did get the book series when I first, when I, it was like one of the first book sets I ever got and I plowed through those so fast, I loved them. And I felt like the TV show was, it was a little different of course, as most shows to books are, but I just loved the TV show, it was so fun. In fact, I started doing a rewatch when I found out that Melissa Gilbert was one of the new Riley Blake designers. So I did a little a little rewatch re and I'm so I'm in the process of rewatching some of those episodes. It's been really fun. <laughs> so Pamela said she wonders what it would look like in reverse, dark background and low volume stars. Hmm, Pamela, I think you may be slightly psychic because I am actually in the process of working on that in a reverse form. And I'm going to not have the whole top put together next week, but at least have one row so you can see how it looks. I'm using one of the florals from uh, Afternoon Tea and then I'm using Hush Hush 2 as the low volumes for the stars. So I'm gonna show you guys that next week. I can't wait for you to see it. It's really looking fun. So I think Pamela is slightly psychic. Maybe, maybe go buy a lottery ticket this week, Pamela. <laughs> Okay, so here is our first row. This is me just being distracted and talking all over the place. Sorry about that, y'all. And here is our second row. This isn't the whole row. This is just enough to kind of give you the gist of how we're doing. So, and I'm gonna kind of start down here so you can see and then pull it because it won't all fit on the screen, but I want to make sure you can see what's happening here. So when you have the rows laid out, it's very easy to see how those stars are working. So you can tell if your row is upside down. So uh, the star kind of overlaps on the very end right here. That's what's happening right here. There's two piece, two triangle pieces and it looks like just sort of the edge of a star is off the border. So that's what we have here. And then I'm just gonna kind of shimmy this so you can see the top part of this star. So last week we sewed this piece in place and I talked about how you wanted to make sure 
that in the next row in the center of that star you use the same fabric because we want those pieces to line up and continue so that they make that diamond that forms the six point star right so i've carried that through here i have you know more blue and then this is how it continues through so you can lay it out and you can see okay i've got everything the right way because if you flip them you'll be able to see like okay that's not working <laughs> So all that is involved in sewing these rows together is just making sure that we are aware of how these seams, these seams have, um, we've kind of got the built in, sorry, doggies are barking, mailman's probably here. <laughs> um, you can see how we've got the seam allowance built in there so that we can try and keep these points. You want to try and keep the points as much as possible, but if your points aren't perfect, don't stress, don't take it out, unless you've really cut into the top of your star like a quarter of an inch, it's not gonna happen. But you can tell by looking at the quilt behind me, let me go to the other camera. By the looking at the quilt behind me, you can't really see, you can see the star shape, but you can't see all the detail in how sharp those points are. And if you've sewn along with me before, you know that I don't let that stress me too much. Obviously we want to be as close to accurate as we can, but if your star points are cut off the tiniest bit, I promise you, once you have sewn this entire quilt together and it's been quilted, no one is gonna notice that your stars aren't perfect. So we're gonna try and get as close to perfect as we can, but we're also not going to stress out, okay? Let's all take a pledge. No stressing is involved. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do, and I did have some questions from people about pressing. So if it's not clear in the pattern, I just kind of did some checks as I was sewing these two sections together and tried to press them different directions to see if it really made a difference. It doesn't because of the angles of these seams and the fact that we do overlap here so that we can have those seam allowance. I find it was just easiest to press to one side. So I pressed the entire row towards the right and the same thing with this row because you're not really nestable seams. This one seam, this section right here is the only section that will actually nest correctly because of the angles of the uh, triangles. So don't worry too much about nesting. We're just going to work on making sure our triangles line up and the seams don't get that bulky. So don't stress about that too much. I just, if you have already pressed it a certain way, that's fine. It, I'm just trying to say that you want to reduce as much bulk as possible, but don't stress too much about that. So let's fold this together. All that talking and then we're just now doing this. <laughs> So what we want to do is line up our hexagon with our triangles right here. And what that's going to do is allow these to have a kind of a quarter of an inch overlap. And I am not normally a big pinner, but because we are working with the bias, it's very easy to stretch these pieces out of shape. So I do recommend looking at this and kind of eyeball your quarter of an inch seam and go ahead and put a pin there. And I do that everywhere there's an overlap. So we wanna overlap about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to kind of pin at these spots. Same thing here, I'm just checking. So I'm having to come back just the tiniest bit here. And I'm just going to pin these together and then we will go over to the sewing machine and sew. I will take these pins out. I'm not a sew over the pins kind of person. What's going to happen when you get to the end of the row is it will line up. We don't go all the way to the end of the row here because you don't need to watch me sew an entire 60 inch seam. That doesn't seem super cool. The other thing you can do is sew on the side where the triangles overlap. And the advantage to that is you can see, do you see that little V of seams right there? My pin is in it, I'll take it out. Do you see where that point is? And there's a seam that goes above and below. That little V is the top of your star point. 
So if you sew on this side, you can see exactly where you need your needle to go, just above that star point, and then your star will look perfect and pretty. So if it's easier for you, then sew on that side. We're gonna do that. I'm just double checking because I unpicked and took that pin out. So we're gonna sew on this side just to make it a little bit easier, and we're gonna sew this whole seam. It won't take too long. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let me make sure I have just no questions. Oh, Pamela says she can't wait to see the reverse quilt next week. And Teresa said she loved the show. She can't wait to see some of her fabrics. I think you'll really like them, Teresa. Um, and Kimberly asked if I was a pinner when trying to sew and be accurate. Yes, more likely to use pins then. A lot of times I can feel the nesting of the seam as I'm sewing so I can make sure. But when I do want my seams to be accurate, I do use a pin. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, Erin says that she's hoping to start today. Love it, Erin. What are you sewing with? That's very exciting. Okay. So let's make sure we are lined up here. And you can see, I don't know if you can see with the sun, we're lining up this hexagon so that it meets the triangle below it, right where that See how the triangle's at an angle and then it goes straight? We cut that little dog ear off last week, or no, two weeks ago when we cut these out. So that's where I want my seam to start and where those two pieces overlap. So again, quarter inch seams, and we're just going to sew. And feel free to ask questions while I'm sewing. Again, this is going to be a little bit long here because we are going to sew this whole seam together. I do pull the pins out before I get to them. There are pins that you can purchase that would allow you to sew over them, um, but I don't have those and I just prefer kind of sliding that pin out. I'm also making sure my pieces are nice and lined up as I go. I also have a little feature on my machine that when I raise my, when I stop, it lifts the presser foot a tiny bit. I love that because when I come to a seam, it's, you know how it's very easy for your presser foot to catch the seam and flip it. But I do like this feature of making sure, this is the Baby Lock Crescendo, and I just like making sure that my presser foot is on top of that seam so it lays nice and flat. And I'm just kind of, my finger's there to guide a little bit and make sure that it goes through over that seam without a problem. So same thing here. I'm just raising the presser foot so that the seam doesn't get caught. And we're almost to the end. It's very exciting times. <laughs> and I'm going to line up my last little section here. And then we will look and see how we did. <laughs> this is kind of uh, double checking my work, right? We'll see, hopefully they're not too crazy. I totally understand if it is super crazy and you don't, um, if you want to take something out. I certainly don't want to make you feel like you can't take things out. <laughs> okay, here we are. We did pretty good. Okay, I'll show you um, over on the other camera where I went off just a little bit and whether I change that or not, I will decide later. <laughs> Oh, Erin says she's sewing with Daisy Fields. Yay! I can't wait to see that. Super fun. Okay, let's take this over and press. Okay, here's what we have. So you can see how that star forms, and you can see that we did pretty good with these seams. So this one is pretty close. These are pretty good. That one's almost perfect. <laughs> this one's good. 
This one I'm off a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch. Can you guys see it? It's off just the tiniest bit. I will confess to you that I would not fix that um, because once I lay it flat, you would really have to look hard to see that it was off that tiny bit. <laughs> so again, that is entirely up to you whether or not you fix that kind of thing, but I don't, um, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> so what you can do here is you can decide how you want to press. I am going to press these down and show you what it looks like, and then I'm going to press them open. And either will work, but you can decide what works best for you. A clapper comes in handy here too because you can make those seams a little bit flatter. Okay, the iron wasn't hot, so we're just going to talk for a minute. <laughs> okay, so, oh, Teresa says she loves the kitty pins. Thanks, Teresa. Um, Lisa says she's working on her afternoon tea quilt top, and she's pinning a lot to line up the scallop shelves. That makes sense. I totally get that. Um, and Linda says... Just got her pattern, so she has to rewatch and catch up. Yay, Linda. Well, the videos will stay available for you to watch anytime, so don't stress about that. Those will be there for you. We'll be there for you. These five words, I swear to you. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to press here. It's a little bulky where all those triangles meet up. Does it say what to do in the pattern? It doesn't. And we're just gonna continue. And I feel like this might be, for the most part, a little bit bulky, especially where those triangles are. And it's hard to press when you're looking up at something. So that's what's happening here. My cord's doing crazy things. Okay, let's see what we have. So it's not too bad. It's a little bulky right in here but for the most part, it's new, not too bad. I think I would leave that. So it's up to you. You're, you're the best uh, judge of how much bulk is going to bother you. Just going to go ahead and press from the front side as well, just to get those seams nice and flat. And if you have a section that feels a little bulky, go ahead and give it a good press and then set a clapper on it and let it kind of sit for a little bit. This is a good time to think deep thoughts about what quilt project you would like to do next. <laughs> and then you can continue going. But the ease of having it all pressed down is that means you can press the entire quilt, all the rows, press them down. And that makes things a little bit easier and you don't have to worry about anything. The rows are all kind of going to go down. You don't have to line them up with any seams on the sides. So it's easy to just press them all down. And it looks really pretty. Look, you guys. So then another row will be put together just like this one and kind of be opposite. So we'll have the bottom portions of the diagonal stars and then a center star as well. And that's all there is to sewing these rows together. It's really very simple and it's just a matter of lining up your pieces correctly and you can double check your alignment by putting it on you know laying them without sewing them laying them together seeing if they make that correct star image and then just flip them over right sides together so really easy let me know if you guys have questions about this or anything Linda says when she presses them open she has a hard time getting them to stay together so if you want to press your seams open, it does help if you have, do you mean that your seams kind of separate on the ends, Linda? Um, if that, let's see. Oh, and Pamela asked, what length do you use when you're planning to press open seams? So if I, I tend to keep my seam allowance at 1.8. So I like to have a little bit smaller. I do a lot of chain piecing. So if I keep my seam allowance a little bit on the smaller side, that makes those ends of your blocks less likely to kind of separate and have those open ends. So if that's even too big, you can even go down to like a 1.6 if you really want to. The only unfortunate thing about that is if you make a mistake, that's just not near as fun <laughs> to unpick as a much larger seam. So, okay, so any other questions? Okay, Teresa says she wouldn't fix it either. Yay, Teresa, high five. <laughs> we'll stick together. 
Uh, Rue says her tea cakes turned out so cute. She still has borders to do, but she had to jump onto this. Yay, Ruth. I can't wait to see it. Please post a photo when you're done. So that is what we have for our rows. And we're going to just sew these all together. And you will see that at the ends of the rows, there's going to be, um, the rows are gonna go like this. So next week, we're gonna talk about how to trim these up so that we keep that quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we are going to talk about adding borders, which is really very simple. It just finishes it off. So we'll talk about that next week and it's gonna be super fun. So those are our, oh, Teresa high-fived back. Yay, Teresa, thank you. <laughs> Mona says she's still working on afternoon tea. That's okay. You can join in with these anytime you would like. So let's go on to other fun things. I want to show you my RBD block challenge block from last week, and then we'll talk about giveaways. How's that sound? <laughs> All right. So if you're not familiar with the RBD block challenge, it is, let's take the wool mat. Well, the wool mat looks okay. It's just kind of yellowy, but that's all right. The block really stands out. Uh, RBD Block Challenge is a free mystery quilt that Riley Blake does every year. They start it in January. It usually goes till May. We have, so we have another week, this week and next, and then we have three weeks in May, I believe. So we are getting close to the end, but that does not mean you can't decide to just go crazy and make some of the quilts or the entire quilt. So they're all free block patterns. They're all sized at 10 and a half inches unfinished. And you can really mix and match them if you don't like them. This is last week's block. It's called Square Peg, and I think it's a really fun one. It's cool how these center diamonds really pop. And I think it's one that would look really fun and interesting on the bias. Like how cute is that? If you did a whole quilt of these and then had a fun like pattern I don't know, I think it's really cool because it would give you like an Irish chain look to it that would be awesome. So this is a free pattern. The fun thing about this sew along is you can make the entire quilt or you can pick and choose your favorite blocks and put them in whatever you would like. You can make a runner, you know, maybe pick three or five and make a table runner. You could even make up just one of them and put them on the back of a jean jacket or something really cute like that. So I'm sewing with my afternoon tea fabrics. I'm loving deciding on the different prints. I'm using a fat quarter bundle of afternoon tea and then the background is one of my Dainty Daisy low volumes. This is the peony. So you can see those little pink flowers scattered throughout. So it's a fun block. We have another one releasing tomorrow that I think is my favorite. No, I've said this before. It's maybe not my favorite, but it's very close to being my favorite. So <clears throat> I really definitely stop by the blog tomorrow and check out, I'm getting the, the giveaway for last week. <laughs> check out the, uh, the block for tomorrow because it's very fun and you guys are gonna love it. So let's talk about giveaways. Oh, let's see. Jo Beth says she bought the kit and has a lot of white fabric left. Is there something else on the quilt we use it for? Jo Beth, are you talking about this quilt, the Vintage Stars quilt, or one of my other quilts. Um, if you're talking about this quilt, then there isn't anything else. You'll just have some extra fabric, I guess. <laughs> so yay for that. <laughs> there, there's no extra borders. You can add an extra border if you have that much left over. Lisa said she loved the RBD block last week. It was a challenge and she did use pins. It turned out nice. I used pins too. There was a lot of seams to nest there. So um, yeah, I did use pins too. <laughs> Kimberly says she loves the color choice. Thanks, Kimberly. And Marion says she loves the tutorials. She prefers to watch someone make a quilt before she dives in. I totally understand that. Okay, so yes, Jo Beth, um, there isn't anything else. If you, all your hexagon pieces are cut out and you have a lot left over, I apologize for that. Um, you'll just be able to use it in another project. <laughs> Okay, so on to giveaways. So every week we have a little giveaway. It's my way of saying thank you to you guys for joining in. It's very easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment and that's whether you're watching live or later in the week and it can be um, wherever, whatever kind of comment you like. Well, it needs to be a nice comment, right? <laughs> mean comments aren't gonna win. But fortunately, we have such a nice group that we never get mean comments. Well, very rarely. 
So I'm really rambly today, <laughs> you guys, all over the place. Okay, so last week our prize, oh, you can see the ceiling fans on, sorry about that, um, is Porch Swing, and you guys fell in love with this collection. It's gorgeous. It's by Ashley Collette Design, and of course, Riley Blake, because we only do Riley Blake around here. Well, pretty much. And look at these prints and colors, you guys. This dark greens with the mustard, and then there's some corals in there. Lots of florals. There's a damask. I'm telling you, this collection is stunning. So if you are not the winner this week, I highly recommend you go get some of this because you will love it. It's so pretty. So to go with a 10 inch stacker, which is the same as a layer cake, it's 42 10 inch squares. I have um, my cute camper pins. These are just darling little pins. They're aqua campers. Even the packaging is cute. You get 60 pins in here. And I have a Riley Blake Designs clapper. And it's even a pretty one with this green through here. Though I haven't seen a not pretty clapper. So these are really handy for getting those blocks really nice and flat. So our prize from last week is this set. And Mavis Harris is the winner from last week. So Mavis, if you are watching, um, or if you are watching later, send me an email, beth at flamingotoes.com, and I will get your prize out to you this week. We have not had um, a claim on last week's prize, so I'll say the name one more time. If, if you don't email me, I'm going to put the prize back in the hopper. So if you are Sandy Moeller and her YouTube is Sandy Moeller 6361, email me Sandy for last week's prize or the giveaway that we had two weeks ago announced last week and I'll get that prize out to you. Otherwise, it's going to go into the hopper. And if you guys are commenting on the videos, you are entering the giveaway. So if you would check and see if you are the winner, that would be super helpful for me. <laughs> okay, so I have another fun, this is the giveaways, this is like we're doing almost all 10 inch stackers for this sew along for the giveaways and I, I'm, I'm down for it. <laughs> oh, Marion says she loves Riley Blake fabric. Thanks, Marion, I do too. <laughs> oh, Mona's gotta go, bye Mona. Okay. So this is paparazzi. This is a basic by Riley Blake, and you can see it is almost like, have you, do you remember seeing like those cartoon arts where it's made up of lots of little dots? I don't think of this as like this. It's a very subtle basic, but it looks super pretty with these little dots in here. So look at the colors we have. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so fun. And they all have these tiny little dots but the color selection on this is off the charts. It's so good. <laughs> Wendy says she feel like you're at bingo and I should pick another name. I know, right? <laughs> it does seem like that. <laughs> All right, so this is a 10 inch stacker, same as a layer cake. You have 42 pieces in here. You have this gorgeous selection of colors. So paparazzi, and uh, oh, we're doing more pins this week. So look at that. These are so cute, you guys. They are Riley Blake Designs bird pins. So they're little aqua birds. They come in a birdhouse box. Like, I mean, I can't even with the cuteness on this. I just wanna take it with me everywhere. I wanna take it out and use it for other things. What can I put in this cute little bird box? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So that, and then I have a very cute Lori Holt zipper bag for you. This is a vinyl bag, and it has, um, you know, it's lined inside. It is got this great aqua zipper and a good sized handle so that you can put a charm on it. And then it, it has this cute uh, vintage, what does she call these? She has uh, paper piecing for these. It's like a starburst block. Somebody help me out here. Um, but this is her really cute little vinyl bag. So this is great for projects. Or you can just, you know, add uh, some cute lips gloss and band-aids and have like a little first aid kit. You can use it for anything. It's just a darling size. Or you could use it as a gift bag and it would be super cute. You could put a few like gift cards or different things in it and give it away like that. So it's just a darling little bag. Oh, a secret stash of M&Ms. Yay, Ruth, let's all, let's all do what Ruth says. <laughs> 
And Dorothy says she needs the bird pins to go with her cat pins. Yes. Okay. How cute would that be in a little pin cushion full of birds and cats? Like, I'm sorry. It's just the cutest thing. Uh, Leona says she loves Lori Holt and birds. The giveaway is destined for her. That is some positive thinking, Leona. I love it. <laughs> Yes, Starburst, Marion. Okay, thank you, Marion. Yes, so she's got paper, um, a paper piecing, yes, paper piecing templates for making this block. And if you haven't seen those, you can go to Fat Quarter Shop um, and pick those up. They're very cute. So that is our prize for this week. If you would like to be entered to win, all you have to do is leave a comment. Super easy, super fun to win. And I will announce the winner next week. And I already have next week's prize picked out. And I think you guys are really going to like it. It's super fun. So, and I gave you a hint secretly in this week's video as to what it was. So, that'll get your brains going and figure out, <laughs> try and guess ahead of time what it is that I am giving away next week. Next week will be our last week in this sew along. So, make sure you tune in for tips on cleaning up the sides of our quilts and then borders. And of course, you don't want to miss our big finale giveaway. Then after that, we are going to start my Heartland sew along. So Heartland is a flag quilt. It is also in Sweet Freedom Fabrics. Again, you can sew along with whatever you like, but I do have Heartland kits and they are in the shop now, so you can easily pick those up and get ready. It was supposed to start on April 29th, but because I have a trip to Chicago that I'm leaving for that day, rather than record that video, I would much rather do that with you guys live. So that means that I am pushing the Heartland quilt so along to May 6th, which is my, so April 29th is my birthday. <laughs> And rather than have the video that day, we're going to do it on my daughter's birthday. Maybe we'll make Becca come in and say hi on her birthday. She'll just love that. <laughs> so we'll kick off the Heartland quilt video sew along. That was a lot of extra words that I don't think needed to be in there. Heartland quilt sew along video, just maybe out of order, <laughs> on May 6th. Okay, so that'll be our kickoff day. I hope you guys can sew along. That one is very fun. Again, make sure you get our kits, your Heartland kit. It's all everything that you need to make up the whole quilt. It has the fabric that you can fussy cut and it makes it super easy and fun. So pick those up in my shop and I have all the Dainty Daisy and Sweet Freedom links in today's video description so you can check that out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you have any questions, email me. That's the best way to get a hold of me if you have questions. I don't always see messenger messages or Instagram messages. They just don't send me notifications and I get a lot of those notifications anyway. So I, um, sorry, one sec. My computer wants to restart and do an update. So let's stop that. Um, Anyway, where was I going? Oh, email me if you have questions and I will do my best to answer you and help you guys out. Thank you guys for sewing along. I love our community. You guys are the best. I will see you next Monday on hopefully another lovely spring day and we are gonna work on finishing up our quilts. Thanks everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye.